Welcome to Ask Stago, expert answers to your expert questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Ask Stago, the podcast dedicated to answer to the question that you may have about our product or hemostasis in general. My name is Cecilia Ke, Project Line Manager here at Stago, and I'm glad to co-host this show with Audrey Carlo, our Scientific Marketing Manager. Hello, Audrey. Hello, Cecile. What is the subject of today's podcast? So we will talk today about a question that is really linked to diagnostic performance. We will try to better understand what is sensitivity and what is specificity of an assay. Ooh, and to answer to our question today, we are welcoming Lidi Niku. Lidi, hello. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, Lidi, you are Director of Design and Biological Application Development within our R&D team. And diagnostic assay performance, I have no secret for you. So let's jump to our first question. When do you have to talk about assay sensitivity and specificity? Well, this question is raised for qualitative assays, yes, no assays, or for quantitative ones with an established clinical decision cutoff. So if we want to give some examples for a lateral flow assay, whatever its application, as long as it is read by the human eye, is a qualitative assay. On the other hand, quantitative assays are the one where an analyte is quantified and possibly gets a claimed cutoff in its intended use. Exactly, Audrey. And you will favor more sensitivity or specificity depending on the intended use of your device and the clinical significance you target. And so, more precisely, what is the sensitivity and what is the specificity? Sensitivity is the ability of an assay to actually detect positive samples. I mean, patients that are actually really sick. The higher the sensitivity, the less false negative results you get. You do not miss any disease patient. Yes, you're 100% correct. And on the other end, the specificity is the rate of proper detection of actually negative samples. So there it means that a highly specific assay does not have false positive results. You do not label a patient with a disease that, while he does not have it. True. And of course, the perfect assay has the highest sensitivity and specificity. But you have to keep in mind that this is just not possible. So depending on what you design your essay for and the clinical consequences of having a false positive or a false negative results, you will favor sensitivity or specificity. Of course, you will try not to degrade too much the counterparty. Okay, so now that we have understand the two concepts, can you give us some concrete examples so that our auditors can better understand the latest statement that you did? Well, one example is the dimer. When it's evaluated as per the CLSI guideline H59 for the exclusion of venous thromboembolism, as per its exclusion intended use, you have to be sure you do not miss any patient. So you don't want any false negative results. It means that the essay number one priority is the highest sensitivity. Yes, and if the assay is specific enough, you need to avoid confirmation tests or treatments and so make some economies. And this is some really invasive tests too. Yes, you got it. But again, the priority is the sensitivity. And this is this CLSI guideline does not call for any performance on specificity. Specificity is then a real plus for the lab to make an educated choice. But the first focus, one more time, is how minimal the number of false negative is, targeting zero false negative. Okay, clear with the dimer. Maybe we can go to another example with the heparin-induced thrombocytopenia diagnosis? Yes. In this context, functional assays that can confirm this diagnosis are not easily accessible to all labs. They are costly and moreover are known to be very specific but not to be very sensitive. There's a lot of literature on this. It means that these assays, when positive, truly indicate the disease, but they miss many patients. So the solution found by learning societies in this HIT context is to implement a diagnosis algorithm where we use, before this functional assay very specific, assays to search for antibodies against PF4 hyperin complex that are known to be very sensitive. Yes, you first make sure that you pick up any possibly healed patient with an immunological assay, and then you confirm 
or you exclude the diagnosis with a very specific functional essay. But with a negative immunological essay, you can safely rule out HIT. This is a very good example on how a strategic test combination can help to overcome the fact that, as you stated earlier, no perfect assay with highest sensitivity and highest specificity exists. So th thank you very much for the both of you for uh, making it really clear. And it was pretty obvious that then you have to make some compromises when designing an essay or defining a cut. Do you have a last word for auditors, Lily? I think your word compromise is the good one. It's a matter of balance all the time. And I would like to stress again the importance of the intended use of the essay. Do not choose it for what it is not meant to be. Talking about using the essay as per intended use, it also means that tests are prescribed in the good context. And in this clinical examination by clinician is of primary importance as the patient's symptoms are definitely the first clues. Yes, the diagnostic is a lab clinician partnership. So it is now time to close the session. Thank you again for the both of you for answering to this question and make it so clear. Uh, thanks to all of you for listening. As usual, you can find any literature or sources that we have talking about in the description of the podcast. And please feel free to send us any question that you may have to our email address, ask at stago.com, and we will be glad to answer to it in the next episode. See you next time. This podcast is brought to you by Stago. Diagnostics is in our blood.